You are watching Junior Certificate Mathematics lesson, and today we are looking at revision Mathematics Paper 2, which is a structured paper. So here you need to have with you a set of mathematical instrument and a calculator, because you are allowed to use a calculator here. So make sure that you do have a calculator. <music> the first question says, what is the range of the participants? So range equals to, to find the range, we subtract the maximum number from the, rather the minimum number from the maximum number. So according to this, the maximum age will be 17, it's 17 here, and then the minimum is 13. So this will be 17 minus 13. That is the range. So it's 17 minus 13. And then what is 17 minus 13? It's 1, 7 minus 13. 7 minus 3 it's four, so the range is four. This is how we get the range. To find the range, you subtract the smallest number from the greatest number within the distribution. So according to this question, it's 17 minus 13, and the answer is four. Question number B says, you are to calculate the mean age of the participants. So this one is looking for the mean age of the participants. We have to go back to the table, and then Let's see how we can work out the mean. We have 10 participants with 13 years. So all that we need to do is to add on to the next row here. And then you can multiply. If we take this to be the frequency, because the participants, this will be the frequency. And then age, you can take this to be the element x. So we can now find what we call the element times the frequency. So 13 times 10. 13 times 10, this is 130. And then 14 times 11. You just need to take your calculator, multiply 14 and 11. So it's 11 times 14. 154. It's 154. Then 15 times 11. 15 times 11. It's 165, 165, and then we have 16 times 4. What is 16 times 4? 16 times 4, 64, and then the last one is 17 times 3. 1, 7 times 3, 51, so this is 51. This is what we get. And then we need to find the sum of 130, 154, 165, 64, and 51. So the sum of the element times the frequency will be 130 plus 154 plus 165 plus 64 plus 51. And let's take our calculator and compute this. It's 130 times, not times, but plus, because you have to add. It's 130 plus 154 plus 165 plus 64 plus 51. And then the answer is 564. So the answer is 564. And then we can now go back to the question. The question says you are to calculate the mean age of the participants. So the mean is given as the sum of the frequency times the element divided by the sum of the frequency. So this will be the sum of the frequency times the element is 564. So this is 564 divided by the sum of the frequency. And then we need to check what the sum of the frequency is. Sum of the frequency is 10 plus, this is 11 plus 11 is 22, plus 7 is 29, 
plus 10 is 39. In fact, this is what is given here. So we just need to divide the sum of the frequency times the element by 39. So we'll divide this by 39. And this will be 564 divided by 39. The answer is 14.46. 14.46, which approximates to 14.5. So this is the mean for the participants. That's how you get it. All that you need to do is to find the sum of the frequency times the element and then divide by the sum of the frequency. The answer there will be the mean. So according to this question, the mean is 14.5. If you are not sure how to round off to the, uh, to the 3SF, that is 3 significant figures. You can write the answer the way it appears on the screen of the calculator. Unless the instruction says correct to answer to 3SF. But if it doesn't say that, you can write the answer the way it appears on the screen of the calculator. So according to this question, our answer is 14.5. And then what's the next question? It says, Mpo has a monthly allowance of 950 pula. He spent 237.50 on transport. Calculate the sector angle that will represent the amount of money he, not she. We cannot have he, and she, so it's supposed to be he here. Mpo has a monthly allowance of 950. He spent 237.50 on transport. Calculate the sector angle that will represent the amount of money he spent on transport. So what's the sector angle here? The sector angle will be 237 pula. 50 divided by the total amount. So the total amount is 950. So it's divided by 950. And we need to multiply this by 360 because it says we are to find the sector angle. Remember an angle around a point is equal to 360 degrees. So we are to multiply by 360 degrees. So it's, it's 237 plus 50 divided by 950 times the angle around a point which is 360 degrees and then take a calculator compute this it's 237.5 divided by 950 this is 0 0.25 and we need to multiply the 0 0.25 by 360 so multiply by 360 the answer is 90. So the sector angle here is 90 degrees because the question says we are to calculate the sector angle. So upon calculating the sector angle here, in this case it's 237.5, rather 237.50 divided by 950 times the angle around a point which is 360. Then we got 90 degrees as a sector angle. Then the next question. A tank has 5,000 liters of water. Some 12.5% of the water was used for irrigation. How many liters of water were used for irrigation? So it says the water which was used for irrigation is 12.5%. So we are to find out what 12.5% of 5,000 pula, rather 5,000 is, because it says 5,000 liters, not pula, but liters. So this will be 12 and a half percent divided by 100 percent times 5,000. And then this will be, we need to change 12 and a half percent into improper fraction because here it is given as a mixed number. So we have to change 12 and a half percent into an improper fraction. And when we change this into an improper fraction it becomes 2 times 12 is 24 plus 1 is 25 over 2 percent divided by 100 percent and we have to multiply by 5,000. This will be 25 over 2 divided by 100 because the division line is here so it says divide by 100. So we'll just say 25 over 2 divided by 100 times 5,000. So this will be 25 over 2 
divided by 100 times 5,000. And then this will be 25 over 2 times 1 over 100 times 5,000. And then the 0 here cancels the 0 over here. The 0 here will cancel the 0 over here. And then 2 here once, 2 into 50 is 25. So all we have 25 times 25. And then what is 25 times 25? We can multiply using our calculator. 25 times 25. The answer is 625. So our answer here is 625. But what did the question say? We need to check what the question was asking us to do. It says, how many liters of water, how many liters of water were used for irrigation? So, the 625 liters of water, 625, not 650, but 625. 625. It's 625 liters. 6, 2, 5 liters. This is the answer to this question. All that you need to do was to convert the 12.5% into an improper fraction, then divide by 100. After dividing by 100, you multiply by the 5,000. Welcome back from the short break. We are revising mathematics paper 2, which is a structured paper, and you are allowed to use a calculator as well as a set of mathematical instruments. So those are the resources you should have with you. And the next revision question says, the table below shows the values of x and the corresponding values of y for the equation y equals to x squared plus 2x minus 1. So this is a quadratic equation. It's y equals to x squared plus 2x minus 1. And then the question says what? These are the values that we are told about. So these are the values for the equation x squared plus 2x minus 1. Then the first question says, Use the grid below to plot the points for the graph of y equals to x squared plus 2x minus 1. So these are the points you are having. And then you are expected to plot them in the grid provided. So let us plot them. The first point is minus 4, 7. So we are to plot the point minus 4, 7. It's minus 4 along the x-axis, then 7 along the y-axis. So it means the point will be here, minus 4, 7. It will be here. The next point, minus, four, minus 2, rather minus 3, 2. Minus 3, 2. So the point is here. The next point, minus 2, minus 1. Minus 2, minus 1. It's a point over here. And then the next point, minus 1, minus 2. It's minus 1, minus 2. It's the point here. And then we have the point 0, negative 1. 0 along the x-axis, then 1 along, rather negative 1 along the y-axis. So it's here. 0, negative 1, and then the next point, 1, 2. So we have the point 1, 2. The point is here. The next point is 2, 7. So we have to plot the point 2, 7. It's 2 along the x-axis, then 7 along the y-axis. The point is here. So we have managed to plot the points. But the question says, the question says use the graph below to plot the points of the graph of y equals to the, so we have plotted the points. And then part B says join the points with a smooth curve with a smooth curve. So what you need to do here is to make sure that you draw a very smooth curve. You join these points using free hand to produce a smooth curve. It is important that you use free hand. If you are going to use a ruler, you know that you will be wrong. The question says draw a smooth curve. And to produce a smooth curve, you need to draw using freehand to produce a curve here. And 
and this is the graph of the function y is equals to x squared plus 2x minus 1. So this is how the graph is like. And then the next question says, draw the graphs of y equals to 7 and y equals to x plus 1. So we are expected to draw these graphs, y equals to 7 and y equals to x plus 1 in the same grid. y equals to 7. The line y equals to 7 cuts the y-axis at 7. So we are to draw a line cutting the y-axis at 7. Let's draw that line. So this is the line y equals to 7. And all that you need to do is just to label it y y is equals to 7. So this is the line y equals to 7. And then the next question says you are also to draw the line y equals to x plus 1. And to draw the line y equals to x plus 1, you need to construct the table of values. You just need to have a table of values where this is your x, this is your y. If you choose your x to be 0, it means your y will be 1. And if you choose your x to be negative 1, it means your x will be 0. If you choose your x to be negative 2, then your y will be negative 1. And then you can plot these points. 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and then negative 2, negative 1. Let's go for a short break. When we come back, we'll make sure that we continue with this question, work it out, then make sure that we complete it. Welcome back from the short break. We are working on the question involving a graph, and we are at a situation where we are to draw the line y equals to x plus 1. We have, plot, we have come out the points x equals to 0 when y is 1. When x is negative 1, y will be 0. When x is negative 2, y will be negative 1. So you are to plot these points in the same grid. 0, negative, rather 0, 1, 0, 1. It's here. This is the point 0, 1. Then we have negative, negative 1, 0 negative 1, 0 is here, and then the next point is negative 2, negative 1. Negative 2, negative 1 is the point here, and then you are expected to draw the graph of this. So this is how the graph of the line y equals to x plus 1 will be. This is y equals to x plus 1. And we have managed to draw the two lines. The next question says, use the graph to estimate the values of x and y. That satisfies the equation y equals to x squared plus 2x minus 1 and y equals to 7. So it says we are to find the values of x and y. That will satisfy this. So let's go to the line y equals to 7. First we have to work with the line y equals to 7. This, this simply means when here, what is going to happen is when y equals to 7, what is the value of x? This is what the question is saying. The, the line is y equals to 7. And then what are the values of x? The values of x are a points where the line cuts the, the curve. So the, the line is cutting the curve at 2. And at, it is cutting the curve at this point, which is a 2 here, because the value of x here is 2. And then it's also cutting the curve at negative 4. So the values of x when y equals to 7 are minus 4 and 2. So we need to write them down. So here, x is equal to minus 4 or x is equals to 2 because that's where the line y equals to 7 cuts the curve. 
And then Roman part two, we are to find the values of x where the line y equals to x plus one cuts the curve. Uh, here, this is the line y equals to x plus one. So we need to check where it cuts the curve. Where does the line y equals to x plus one cuts the curve? The line is cutting the curve when x equals to negative two, that is at this point, and also when x equals to one. So it's negative two and one. So this simply means x here will be equals to negative 2 or x is equals to 1. x equals negative 2 or x is equals to 1. So these are the values of x. It's x equals negative 2 and x equals to 1. And then what about the next revision question? The next efficient question says to solve the following equations. We have the equation 3 over 2 to the power x equals to 81 over 16. And we have to solve for the variable x. All that we need to do is to write 81 over 16 using the base 3 over 2. So this will be 3 over 2, all this raised to the power x. It's equals to... We need to write 81 using base 3. So this will be 3 to the power 4. Because when we multiply 3 4 times, we are going to get 81. So 81 is equal to 3 to the power 4. Divided by 16 can be written using base 2. So when we write 16 using base 2, it will be 2 to the power 4. So all that we are saying is 3 over 2 all raised to the power x is equal to 3 to the power 4 divided by 2 to the power 4. And this can be written as 3 over 2 all raised to the power x is equal to 3 over 2 all raised to the power 4. Because you can see that there's a common power. It's a 4 and a 4. So we can just write this as 3 over 2 all raised to the power 4. And then 3 over 2 is the same as 3 over 2 on this side, meaning x is equal to 4. So we manage to solve for x. Our x is equal to 4. This is how we solve exponential equation because this is an exponential equation. All that you need to do is to make sure that you write numbers using the same base. Here we, we have written 81 using base 3 and then we wrote 16 using base 2 such that we get 3 over 2 all raised to the power 4 is equal to 3 over 2 all raised to the power x. Then 3 over 2 is equal to 3 over 2. Then x will be equal to 4. The next question. We have 2w plus 3z equals to 2 and 3w plus 2z equals to negative 2. These are the two simultaneous equations and then you expected to solve them. But before you can solve simultaneous equation, you must make sure that one of the variables are balanced. But here when you check, you can see that none of the variables are balanced. So it is important that we balance the one of the variables first. We can decide to balance the coefficient of the variable w. So if we balance the coefficient of the variable w, it means we can multiply the top equation by 3, and then we multiply the bottom equation by 2. The top equation is multiplied by 3, and then the bottom equation is multiplied by 2. When we multiply the top equation by 3, we will get 6w plus 9z is equal to 6. And then 2 times 6w is 6w plus 2 times 2z is 4z is equals to negative 4. So these are the equations that we're having. And then when we check, you can see that the coefficients of the variable w are balanced. Therefore, you can now eliminate w because its coefficients are balanced. And when we check, this is a plus and a plus. When the signs are the same, we subtract. When the signs are different, we add. So in this case, it means we are going to subtract because we can see that it's, it's plus 6w and plus 6w. So the signs are the same. Therefore, we have to subtract.
six w minus six w is zero, and then nine z minus four z, it's five z. So it's plus five z. Six minus minus four it's equals to ten, meaning we have five z. It's equals to ten over this side, and then we can divide by five. Divide by five, z will be equals to two. So z is equals to two. And then when z is equals to two, what is the value of w? Z is equals to two. So we can take any of the equations. We can take the equation three w plus two z. It's equals to negative two. So this will be three w plus two times two because the value of z is two. So it's two times two. It's equals to negative two. And then this will be 3w, it's equals to 3w plus 4, it's equals to negative 2. Then 3w will be equals to minus 6, because the 4 here is positive. When you take the 4 to the other side, it becomes negative. So this will be minus 2, minus 4. Then we can divide by 3, divide by 3. And then when divide by 3, we'll get w as negative 2. So our z is 2 and w is equal to negative 2. This is how you solve simultaneous equations. All that you need to do is to make sure that the coefficients of one of the variables are balanced. And then after balancing the coefficient of those variables, you can now subtract or add depending on the signs. And I want to encourage you to keep revising so that you can get ready for your final examinations. It is very important that you start revising so that you can ask for help where you don't understand.